Anti-access area denial. A year ago, we started our journey to define it and understand its components. In our last episodes of InfoWar and Rista, we saw that deep sensing and influence are critical to an effective A2AD strategy. Today, we talk about the essential component that allows leaders to make informed decisions, situational understanding, along with the methodology to both discern understanding and communicate insights, that is, battle management systems. So join us on forming the common operational picture. I am your host, and this is 35 Fox Talks. is the future. The world is awash in data, especially with the rise of the ubiquitous cyber domain and maturing of global integration. There is so much data, and data about data, that computers are required to aid military leaders in making sense of it all. In modern militaries, battle management systems are the confluence the center of gravity for A2AD activities. At first, this seems like a bold claim, battle management systems being the center of gravity for A2AD? That is, until you read the doctrines and think tank pieces across the globe. Let's look at the U.S. Army doctrine as our example. In the brand new field manual, 3 tac 0 we find the following excerpts. The command and control or fighting function. The command and control warfighting function is the related tasks and a system that enables commanders to synchronize and converge all elements of combat power. The primary purpose of the C2 warfighting function is to assist commanders in integrating the other warfighting functions, movement, maneuver, intelligence, fires, sustainment, and protection, effectively at each echelon, and to apply combat power to achieve objectives and accomplish missions. Here's where we talk with bold letters. The C2 system includes people, processes, networks, and command posts. All elements of the system are critical in supporting effective decision making and the tempo required to defeat enemy forces. C2 supports the creation and exploitation of information advantages through the activities of developing situational understanding, decision making, and operating networks. C2 synchronizes the systems and capabilities that comprise the other warfighting functions. Strategy, operational art, planning, operational approaches, operational frameworks, risk management, and decision making are all part of C2. C2 reflects leader action and how army forces achieve unity of effort and unity of purpose during operations. See ADP 6 tac 0 for more information on C2. Now, here's where we're going to break into a future episode on a Q&A. What is the difference between mission command and command and control? But again, that's a future episode. We'll do a quick Q&A because a couple of you have been asking, what is the difference? And at first we couldn't figure it out, but all the new doctrinal literature has made that fairly clear. Now, let's quickly take a deeper look at the meaning of information advantage. We like the definition Maggie Smith and Nick Stark use in their article, open source data is everywhere except the Army's concept of information advantage. The definition is, information advantage is a condition of relative advantage that enables a more complete operational picture and leads to decision dominance, defined as the sensing, understanding, deciding, and acting faster and more effectively than the adversary. When we combine our highlighted texts, we see that the command and control system is synonymous with battle management systems, and that they are critical in supporting effective decision making and the tempo required to defeat enemy forces. This is because they create and exploit conditions of relative advantage that enable a more complete operational picture and lead to an ability to sense, understand, and decide more effectively than the adversary. From this, we can understand that the first layer in battle management systems is sensing. And it is here that we come full circle back to our A2AD tree. 
Sensors are assets responsible for gaining and maintaining contact with enemy assets. These are encompassed by the categories of Information Warfare, RISTA, IADS, and Maritime Platforms. Information collected by these assets are sent to battle management processors like the U.S. Army Air and Missile Defense Workstation, AMDUS, or the Tactical Airspace Integration System, TAIS, or the Advanced Field Artillery Tactical Data System, AFATIDS, or the Distributed Common Ground System Army, D6A. More bluntly, the first layer sees the enemy and reports raw data about them to a person behind a computer or radio. This is your kill chain slash kill web slash sensor to shooter link. Think of this like modern Western news companies. The goal is to be the first to get the story out. Sensors are sources, while field reporters are the people manning AMDUs, TAS, DSIGs, etc. They are working to provide people with real-time information as fast as possible. Which opens up a real big problem. Just like the news gets things wrong when they rush to be the first to report breaking news, the rush to get raw information to decision makers as fast as possible leads to leaders acting on incomplete or incorrect data. This issue is so old that our friendly general from the 1800s, Clausewitz, said many intelligence reports in war are contradictory, even more are false, and most are uncertain. In short, most intelligence is false. This is one of two main reasons for 35 Fox all-source analysts and... The Common Operational Ground Picture, COP. Doctrine defines a common operational ground picture is key to achieving and maintaining shared situational understanding in all domains and making effective decisions faster than the threat. There's that theme again. Be faster and just as accurate, if not more accurate, than the enemy. It continues, The common operational picture is a display of relevant information within a commander's area of interest tailored to user requirements and based on common data information shared by more than one commander. It continues, Although the COP is ideally a single display, it may include more than one display and information in multiple forms such as graphic representations, or written reports. The COP facilitates collaborative planning and helps commanders at all echelons achieve shared situational understanding. COP must account for relevant factors in domains affecting the operation, and it provides and enables common understanding of the interrelationships between actions and effects through the physical, information, and human dimensions. Shared situational understanding allows commanders to visualize the effects of their decisions on other elements of the force and the overall operation. Command posts draw on a common set of shared and relevant information to create a digital cop. Units always maintain an analog cop in the event that the digital cop is compromised. During large-scale combat operations, communications are likely to be degraded or denied during the course of operations. Army forces maintain shared situational understanding by updating physical maps and graphics and using rehearsed and reliable primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency, also known as PACE, communications plans. Command posts are typically responsible for maintaining the digital and analog COP. Units develop standard operating procedures, also known as SOPs, reporting timelines, and battle rhythm events to ensure the COP is accurate, relevant, and current. From all of that, we can understand that the second layer of battle management is correlating an abundance of raw information into something that makes sense, a holistic sense of the truth from deception, something that the Army calls situational understanding. As a 35 Fox, you should understand this. This is your realm. Single source collectors and analysts work in the first layer. Your focus of effort is in the second layer. Help the friendly commander come to an understanding of the operational environment and enemy operations based on combat information and intelligence information. Whether it's friendly operations or enemy operations, COPs are what allow commanders to understand the larger objectives of battlefield maneuvers and take appropriate actions to deal with them. 
when we go back to looking at all the components of an A2AD strategy, we can see how central to information advantage and decision dominance battle management systems are. Information warfare subcategories, cyber operations, and perception management conduct deep penetration of computer networks and human cognition. RISTA assets orient traditional spycraft against traditional threats. Both report raw information to Layer 1 battle management systems, who process, exploit, and disseminate PED, that information to feed a future decision or generate an immediate action, say initiate a fire mission or shooting down of an aircraft or sinking a ship or laser dazzling a satellite camera or jamming communications. All information is consolidated in a Layer 2 battle management system where senior leaders can gain an overall understanding of the larger strategy at play and make deliberate decisions on adjustments to their operations. Updates to operational activities are passed to other A2AD components who continue their workflows. In short, A2AD strategies are coordinated and managed via battle management systems. The more you know about the enemies, and the more you know about yours, the better you'll be able to disintegrate A2AD networks. Now that was both a lot of information and not nearly enough. To learn more, contact your installation's foundry facility, your unit's digital intelligence system master gunner, or the Army Foundry platform at Fort Liberty, North Carolina. Until next time, stay safe and God bless.